Welcome to Dish and Dirt. I'm Cami Marsh. On this episode, we're going to be learning about those spring flowers and vegetables that you want to plant in your gardens. So we'll be headed out to talk to some experts at Frialdenhoven Nursery. So let's dig in. for um, visiting with us today. We want to tell our viewers about from the time we plant the seed here at Freudenhoven's until the time that the viewer actually takes the plant home. So we want to talk them through that whole process. So can you kind of start us out? Sure. We start um, most of their vegetable seeds and stuff here are started and a lot of their flowers are started and they, they use a machine to do most of the seeding but I'm going to you know, basically look at today a way a homeowner could do it uh, if you want to do your own at home. But um, they have a machine here that does it and then they transfer from from those trays into the, the four packs, the three packs, the six packs, or you know, the quart cups that, uh, that you would buy and carry home and plant in your own garden. Um, I guess first thing you, you need is to, you know, get what kind of seed that you're gonna use and uh, those come in all variety of packages and sizes um, and the uh, the most of the ones that they use here are commercial type seed uh, although they are getting uh, better for the homeowner and they're they're a pelletized seed and then they're also coated uh, with uh, something to keep them from uh, mildewing or something as right. they as they grow uh, so you can get those anywhere you can mail order them or you can buy them uh, in the grocery stores or, or the box stores, but they use a large volume here. And as you can see, this bag, this is one variety of tomato seed. And that's a lot uh, of seed. That they use. Yeah, there's probably 10 to 15,000 seeds in that bag. Uh, but anyway, they start, and with a homeowner, what you'd want to do is find some kind of a small tray to start them in okay. so that it doesn't take up a lot of your room. Um, and one of the things that I have here, there's a tray. This has little pepper seedlings in it. And basically it's just planted in rows uh, in the dirt. You just, you know, make your little row in the dirt, put your seed in and cover it up. And then keep it moist until, until it comes up. And it's um, neat, you can really kind of see some of the little seeds still on. They are still, uh, still on there. Uh, he can pick that up in a minute. But once you get your seed planted and you get them up, um, you know, then you want to take them from that stage into a bigger container where they can grow out individually. And uh, so that's what they do here. They start something like this, and then they go from that into uh, their, their, their pack trays. And this is a solid tray. It doesn't have little compartments that's like correct. this one. That's correct. So. It's just, just a big open uh, tray. But, and you can see they're sawn in rows. You can spread them as far apart as you want to, uh, depending on how many that you want. Uh, in your garden. But here, this is one of the popular ways that they, that they do it. And the reason being is when it's time to transplant, when they're getting their second leaves on, their true leaves, not the cotyledon leaves, but when they're getting the true leaves on, then they just take and just, you can just take and tear out uh, a section of the plants. And, uh, and then you can go straight from that into your six pack trays or whatever else you're wanting to use. Uh, a word of caution when dealing with any young seedling is there is two places that you can hold it that won't hurt the plant. There's one place you hold it and that will kill the plant. So don't ever, when you're dealing with small plants, don't ever grab it by the stem because just a small amount of pressure on that stem can mess up the phloem and xylem inside and it'll actually kill it at that point where you touched it. So always when you're handling small plants, handle them by the, the leaf or handle it by the roots because it can regrow both of those if you damage it, but it can't regrow a stem. Very good. So, and then so just- Super helpful tip for our homeowners. Yeah, so, but um, once you get, you know, get all your stuff ready before you start doing this because you don't want to expose that plant 
and its roots to sunlight for a long period of time. In order to dry out. Yes. So, so does our soil in our, like, so it's light and fluffy here. Does it need to be moist when we transplant into no, it? No, do it, do it with it dry because it's a lot easier and you just take the little plant and just, I just use the finger and stick it in and you can go as deep or as shallow as you want. Uh, but if you plant them right on top of the ground, they're going to lay down on you. Okay. So always plant them, you know, push them down deep. And most vegetable plants and flowers, uh, it's not going to matter how deep you push that stem. It's not going to hurt the plant and keep it from growing. So just, you know, just push it in. If you're not comfortable with that, you know, make a hole in your dirt where you're wanting to go with it and then take the plant and just set it in there and then, and then squeeze in around it. Very good. And that way you haven't touched it or damaged the roots in any way. Um, but it's the hardest thing a homeowner is going to have with, with starting their own seed is keeping the, the, the soil medium that they're using uh, moist enough for the seed to come up, but not too wet that it causes the seed to rot right. uh, within the soil. And um, there's a lot of ways to to get a, you know to get around having problems uh, with your seedlings, but and there's a lot of good books out there and a lot of things online that you can get and and uh, if you want to go this route and and study up on it. So we've planted it in here, and yes. so these are uh, some tomatoes that have been in here for a little while. Yes, these have been in this for about a week. Okay. Uh, they they came up about uh, twelve days ago uh, and they've been in this for about six or seven days and then there's some more here that I wanted to show as far as the progression you see it goes from the two leaves um, on these they've got their second full leaves and they're actually starting uh, to develop their third and fourth leaves down inside uh, and then these are some that are a week farther along so you see once they get to that point where they've got that true leaf they'll start getting a lot more energy and they'll start growing a lot faster. Now these plants have been in a greenhouse uh, all their life. They haven't been outside anywhere yet. They haven't been hardened off other than to the sunlight. Um, so, you and so know, talk to us a little bit about hardening off. Okay. Once you get your plants up to say this stage or wherever you want them to go in the ground, uh, if you've been growing them under grow lights in your home or if you've been growing them uh, uh, just in your house, uh, where they're kind of leggy and stuff, you need to harden them off before you put them in the ground. And the reason you do that is because you have, um, if you took them straight out of this environment where it's 100% daylight and it's about 90 degrees in here or more, and you put them directly outside, then it's a shock to their system because you're putting them in cooler ground and you're also putting them out at night where the temperatures are cooler. So you want to harden them off slowly, and to do that, you would take by uh, going out in the morning when, you know, after the sun's coming up, set them outside, let them sit there for an hour or so the first day, you know, bring them back in, especially if you're doing them in your home under lights, and then gradually lengthen that time over about a four-day period where you're leaving them outside most of the day, and then you can do that with the nighttime as well. You know, leave them out for a couple of hours or three hours, or if it's not going to be very cold that night, say it's not going to be down below 60 degrees, you could just leave them out. But it, if you're taking them directly out of a greenhouse, you need to give it about a week for them to harden off. Otherwise, you'll get burn spots on their leaves, scald spots, which will turn white or a yellow color. It won't kill the plant, but it just slows it down. And we don't uh, want to slow them down. We're no, going to get not, tomatoes as soon as we can. That's correct. This time of year, you want them to to really take off. Very good. Okay, so we're also going to go look at some bigger tomato plants and talk to the um, viewers about how we transplant those into the ground. Okay. So we saw the, the smaller tomatoes and now we're actually out here in the retail area where the customers would be actually purchasing tomatoes. So let's kind of talk through all the different okay. stages we're seeing out here. Okay. Well, you're going to see tomatoes this time of year. You're going to see you know, from the small ones like we were using uh, earlier that we were looking at, you're going to see them from this tall, uh, you know, all the way up to, uh, you know, the really large tomatoes. Uh, 
you know, such as this one, which is, you know, a good 18 inches tall. Okay. Um, Same principle. We don't want to pinch on the stem. You want to make one, sure you um, do the root ball or the top of the plant? No. Once they get uh, some size on them, once they're the size of, of a pencil, okay. even this one, you're fine to handle the stem on this. You're not going to hurt it. Uh, because it's gotten big enough and hard enough that it'll take the pressure from your hand. So at that point, it's not an issue. That's just for the really small ones when you're dealing Trans with transplanting them Very good. and working with them. So you're going to find tomatoes, uh, again, because of the weather that we've had. Um, and so you're going to find some that, that were ready to be sold two weeks ago that, are, that may still be on the shelf. And we've gathered some up. and. And I want to look at some of those and and uh, and talk to you about them. There's nothing wrong, uh, you know, with a plant this size if you buy it in the pack, um, and that doesn't matter where you buy it, whether it's here or a box store or anywhere else. There's nothing wrong with the plant. The roots are still good on it. They're still white. It's just gotten tall because they, you know, as they sit in the greenhouses waiting to come out to retail they're all striving to get to that same sun. amount of sunlight. So they get a little bit tall well, doing that. It's not, uh, it's not anything wrong with the plant itself. Um, and if you do find plants like this that are, that are what we call leggy or a little bit tall, there's several solutions to still use it. It's still a good plant, nothing wrong with it. You can either plant it uh, deeper in the ground, you know, up to this level. Okay. And if you do that, pull the leaves off of the bottom you know, get those off, uh, you know, so that they don't rot in the soil and create a path for fungus and stuff to get into the, into the plant. But, and then plant it that deep. Okay. Or if you run into some that are even taller than that and it happens to be the variety you want and you can't find um, a shorter plant, then there's nothing wrong with this one either. It's still, you know, it's still a good healthy plant. Uh, starting to get a little bit of discoloration on the roots where they're getting a little bit of yellow brown color to them. Uh, but to solve that, all you have to do is just tear the root ball itself, which will force the roots to send out new root growth. Okay. Um, and it'll start growing that way. And a lot, we get a lot of questions about what are the bumps on the tomato plant? Okay. The little bumps on the tomato plant, if you've ever looked at one, it's got little hairs all up and down the stem. And wherever one of those hairs are, if it comes in contact with the soil or the right conditions, it'll start trying to grow another root to bring more energy into the plant. Okay. And you're gonna see some plants that have those, uh, what you call aerial roots that are coming out. And you can see them a little better on this one. Um, and the reason being is it's in a flat of other tomatoes in the greenhouse and it's getting shaded up here. So it's dark down here and the tomato is thinking, well, I'll send roots out into this dark area uh, to try to get more nutrition for myself so I can outreach and outgrow all the other ones I'm sitting next to. Very good. Um, and uh, you're gonna find, uh, you know, at this, at this stage of the year, you're gonna have, uh, you know, big plants um, that have already got blooms and stuff on them that are ready to go in the ground. Uh, you're going to find some that are, have a, uh, a root growth problem or a uh, what we call uh, almost root bound. This right. plant uh, is getting close to that stage. And what happens if you just sit this in the ground or into your soil without tearing those roots, it's going to think it's still in that plastic cup that we just took it out of. Right. And it's going to continue to grow in a circle. And then so, it'll just girdle the plant. It'll well, it won't. It will at at some point. It will girdle it, and it'll starve for nutrition because it's not sending roots out into the soil. Right. So again, the reason, the way to get around that is just strictly to tear those roots before you plant it. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop that circular growth pattern for the ones you didn't tear in two. Now instead of them growing in a circle, they're going to grow start out. growing out. Very good. So we have lots of customers out here at Free Alton Hovens buying all kinds of good tomatoes. So thanks for giving us some helpful hints on how to do that. You're welcome. Thanks for watching this episode of Dishing Dirt. We'd like to thank Randall Davis and Free Alton Hoven Greenhouse for helping us out today. So see you next time.